Welcome to Mind Your Business, the channel where we are in a everybody business. If you don't mind getting in people's business, you're on the right channel. Talking about current topics and gossip. Hello, what's going on my nosy people? I hope you're all doing well. Had a blessed festive season. And yes, Happy New Year to you all. Okay, so we are back with some news on Ready to Love. Because the new, the new episode is out of Ready to Love. And of course, I'm here to recap. But, you know, I don't do the whole rundown of the whole show. I just recap bits that I think are interesting and highlight some stuff to look at. So this episode of Ready to Love was about meeting the family. We know that we kind of whittled it down. It's just the remaining, uh, what, five women left. We've got Aisha and Dante. We've got Sydney, who likes Phil. She's got a connection with Phil, but also has a connection with Frank. Uh, Sabrina and Walter. And we know that that, to me, is a little bit by default because Mameen weren't kind of having the way he was kind of treating her. Uh, so we know we covered their communication issues where she kind of took herself out of the moment for that one and just decided to focus on Frank. You know, that made it easier for Walter to just focus on Sabrina, basically. But they also have their own connection. Mameen is obviously focused on Frank. And um, who else am I missing? And then you've got Shiloh, who's also got a connection with Phil. So Shiloh's got a connection with Phil. Right, done. So... For this episode, like I said, it's meet the family. So Dante meets Aisha's mum and her brother. Um, I thought it went well. I thought it was interesting that they asked the right questions about, you know, of course you're going to be questioning about the fact that he's got three kids and three baby mums. And so, of course, the brother asked the question, you know, you've so you got three kids, you've got three babies, mamas, like, how's that all going to work? So he was saying that they got on well and that showed their family that, you know, there won't be any unnecessary, any unnecessary drama to bring to Aisha's doorstep. Um... But yeah, they seem like they got along really well and they are connecting and vibing nicely. So I don't really see no big issues there. We'll see how that goes at the reunion, whether they're still together or what really happens, because we know that's usually when the truth comes out. So, but hopefully they're doing all right. So Sydney, I thought was interesting that she chose Phil to meet her parents. So to me, I see it as they to have a real kind of like sexual chemistry going on, like they've got a, a sexual attraction going on to me. And... um so you can see that, you know, she seems kind of like giddy kind of around him. Uh, parents, I thought, were good if <laughs> they asked some questions. I like the mum was just saying, look, you know, if you had to play, then you need to keep on playing there. Yeah? So I thought that was funny. So if you're a player, you better keep on playing. And I thought, yes, mummy, that's right. Let him know, innit? It's your little princess. You want to make sure she's all right. And um, Sydney got a bit tearful because she, she said that she's had some difficult relationships in the past. But yeah, I thought um, Phil was nice in the fact that he bought, he's very smooth. He came with his flowers for Sydney, flowers for her mum and some, a drink, it sounds like he bought him a drink um, for the father as well. So I thought, oh yeah, you're coming ready to come and charm your way in. But um, they definitely got a chemistry there, even as like when he exited, you can see she's kind of giddy and kind of really close up to him. They got that chemistry right now to me where it's just you know quite sexual i don't necessarily see anything deeper than that per se at the moment because they haven't shown that if there is that anyway so long story short family meeting went well there mimim it was good to see that you know she brought her dad her uncle and her big sister um like she said her dad is west african and so the african fathers are definitely going to be on what they want from this man who's coming in to the, you know, their daughter, his daughter and his niece's life. And obviously, big sister is there to check him as well. So they met with Frank. Um, uncle made me laugh when he asked, so, you know, where does Mimi stand in the pecking order? And Frank was honest in saying that he does have a connection with somebody else. Of course, you know, if Mimi's dad, that's not what you want to hear for your daughter, innit? You want your daughter to be first place and nobody else in the mix. So you could tell by daddy's face that he wasn't too impressed. And I like that daddy was straight, to the, said, was straight to the point and said, listen, you know, don't waste my daughter's time. And, you know, if you're not serious and you're out here for some adventures, it's the wrong one. But overall, I thought that it went well. They seem like they kind of like Frank. A bit wary, I thought, of the fact that, you know, he said what he said in terms of being honest. Um, but of course, like I said, you're going to have your daughters back in that sense and want the best. But it seemed like it went really well from that perspective. So other meetings that happened were um, Sabrina and Walter. So we know, like I said, that they're together. And um, I thought it was interesting that Sabrina did say that she feels like 
she's not quite sure whether she's been chosen by default. And I think, yes, you have been chosen by default, actually, because, yes, you did have a connection. But, you know, I feel like he had a connection with Mimin as well. But because of what happened, it just ended up being him and Sabrina. But I don't necessarily... I'm not sure about those two. I think, yeah, they look cute together, but at the same time, I'm not entirely sure. Because if she feels like that, then that's going to be niggling in the back of her head. Rightfully so. And I'm not sure he's that into her as well, because she did say about the fact that he doesn't really call her as much. So I don't really know about that. I think it's going to be interesting at the reunion. But anyway, he met um, Sabrina's cousin. The interesting question that I thought Sabrina's cousin asked him was about the fact that, you know, he usually goes for younger women, which um, obviously Mimin was younger. But um, Sabrina is 46 and she looks great. And she was, you know, I think the answer that he gave was good, obviously, talking about the fact that obviously he's, he's a widow and his wife would have been her age anyway. But, um, yeah, I thought it was a good question. I thought he answered the question well. But time will only tell, the reunion will tell whether this is something that will last. I ain't too sure, to be honest. I have question marks over that one. So time will tell. Now, on with um, Sydney, uh, Sydney again, but this is where she brought uh, her sister to meet up with Frank this time at her apartment. So, like I said, I thought it was interesting that she actually chose Phil to meet her parents rather than Frank, considering that at the start she kept going about Frank being like her and, you know, she, he's just the male version of her. She still chose to bring Phil. Obviously, Phil worked charm anyway because, you know, he came across um, very well in the meeting with the parents. Um, Frank, I thought, was interesting with the sister because you can see the sister and her uh, and Sydney's body language changed around the question around, you know, are you dating any other women? Uh, again, Frank was trying to be honest, saying that, you know, he has got he is talking to one other woman. Obviously, you know, Sydney knows this, but obviously Sydney wants to feel like she's number one. Every woman wants to feel like they're number one. But um, at the end of the day, you could see her body language switch. And she did say from before that, you know, to her sister to kind of grill him because she has her options. Because to me, it seems like, you know, they gravitated towards each other. A, because they, you know, he finds her attractive. He likes the way she looks. Um, yes, she's a pretty girl. And Mimin is also a pretty woman too. I didn't like the fact that he was like saying, you know, oh, you know, um, Sydney's got this model body kind of thing. It's like, well... Uh, have you seen the meme because she looks great anyway so what are you talking about anyway I thought it was just interesting because I feel like yes he likes Sydney and more on a looks level but he connects with the meme more probably on like a more soul level whereas um for Sydney I feel like she's just going with the connection that she has with Phil right now which is more physical attraction and she's already said that she feels like Frank is kind of like similar to her and they both are kind of friends on each other anyway in you know inadvertently when you look at it because he's talking about oh, I don't know if she's too much too much like me so she's do I need to be with someone who's like me and she's saying similar stuff like you know she likes him but is he just like a male version of her so should she be putting him in the friend zone so to me they're both kind of friends on each other but I could tell that she was off of him even from her body language when he said yeah he does like the memes for the fact that he even mentioned her name. You can tell she, her body language kind of shifts. She even turns her back on him at that point. I just thought, yeah, she's out. Um, she's kind of checking out of that. But again, you know, we'll see up until the end because with these shows, there's always sort of twists and turns. But that's what I think at the moment. I think um, he might be hooked on her for the looks. She is probably more hooked on Phil for his looks and sexually attracted to him at the moment. And he's an entrepreneur, so maybe she's thinking, OK, this is something that's a bit different. Whereas... Um, Frank obviously has his um, business where he has his own cocktail brand and things as well. So they do have the same industry. But then do you want to be with someone in the same industry? And it, I just feel like it's not going to necessarily be them two at the end. So, yeah, I always felt, I feel like, you know, Sydney is definitely more a feeling, it's definitely feeling, you know, feel more at the moment based on their chemistry, you know, but... Um, we just don't know how that will last. We'll see how that works out. Was that reunion? But anyway, on to Shiloh and Phil. So at some point, of course, I'm expecting Shiloh to introduce Phil to her family, but that didn't happen. Instead, we saw Shiloh and Phil meet up with Tommy for what I call kind of an intervention, an emergency intervention. 
And then, you know, they start to talk about what happened. You know, Sholo is talking about the fact that they, they both met at a bar the night before and they got into an argument and she wasn't really comfortable with the way things ended um, and what happened. And, you know, Phil kind of describes the fact that they were talking together, they were having a conversation. And I really thought it's got to do with the fact that he's not chosen her yet. Because obviously we know from the previous series where they were away, she did tell him that, you know, she liked him and she's basically put all her eggs in one basket, which was him. But he just kissed her on the lips and didn't say, yeah, I'm choosing you too. As which I pointed out in the video that I did. If you've seen that, you can check that out. If you haven't seen that, then you can check that out. But I did flag that and say, well, while she said that she chose him, he didn't say nothing back. So he just literally just kissed her and kind of to like, I felt like just to kind of appease, but she didn't really delve deeper into it. But she didn't, but yeah, she didn't really question it much at the time because I felt like she just took it on as a, okay, yeah, that must be, he's choosing me. But his words didn't work that, he didn't say that. And he obviously isn't at that point in, in the process. So I feel like obviously that's been niggling at her. And she, um, she did say that she's been kind of thinking about that and, you know, reviewing that process and thinking, well, actually he didn't really give her an answer. So... Clearly, they met up to, for her to try and get this answer. Sounds like he didn't want to give her an answer. And then obviously it's going back and forth, back and forth. Point being is they like, ended with her apparently walking away and they're in an argument and it's late at night or early hours of the morning, we should say, four or five in the morning. So, and they're in DC and he's saying that she's storming off towards an alleyway. So he's gone to go and pick her up. So she's upset that he's picked her up to bring her back to the car. Now, I can see both elements of this and both sides in the sense of you know, a he shouldn't have to pick. He shouldn't have picked her up. You know, he could have just gone to her and said, "Just come back or follow me." But who knows what state they were in? Was she really crazy drunk or was she not? But it's her body, and she should be. You know, if she doesn't want you to touch her, then that's fair enough, right? Um, but I also think that he was coming from a good place. I don't think he was being, you know, bad mind about it. I feel like he wasn't necessarily being a bully about it. I reckon he just thought, you know what, it's an alleyway. It's not. It's, it's dark. It's not, it's not like good for you to be out here on your own walking down this little alleyway. And as a man, I don't want to leave you here knowing that I was the last person to see you. So maybe that's where that kicked him. And I also thought, well, didn't he lose his mum? So who knows, you know, what kind of um, emotions that brings up for him. So he might have felt like, you know, I don't want to leave her behind. I want to make sure she's safe. You know, I don't know person, him personally, but I'm just watching it, looking at it that, from that perspective. For her, obviously she referenced the fact that she's had traumas and, you know, it was a trigger for her because of her personal issues that, she, that she's experienced when she was younger dealing with physical and verbal abuse so I can understand that part what I cannot understand is um at the ladies lounge where they all are reviewing and talking about how good their you know family meetups went when it turns to Shiloh and she's talking about the fact that she you know, she's a bit heartbroken about how things have gone you know, she she did say she didn't feel like he was trying to harm her, as in physically harm her, right? Which I thought was good that she said that. And Tommy said that, yeah, I'm glad you kind of said that because, you know, I'd be you know mad if it was any other way. But then later on, when she meets up with Phil face to face, granted, I agree that he didn't really take acceptance. You know, he didn't take accountability initially. I think at first he could have just said, you know what? I'm sorry if I offended you by picking you up, blah, blah, blah. I feel like he got a defensive. He was trying to explain his point, which is about being protective and not leaving her behind. And, you know, it's late at night. So obviously you don't want that to happen to her, innit? So that's just common sense to me. So I get that bit. But what annoyed me is when she sent, when he asked her, you know, do you think I was trying to harm you? And she said, yeah, emotionally. I'm like, no, I don't think so. I feel like that's her own triggers again. I feel like she has her own little healing to do. Because you can see that that whole issue of him picking her up, which I don't necessarily agree, but I get it. If it's late at night and he's worried, that wasn't the right action. But I feel like she's taking it a bit too personal without, you know, trying to belittle or diminish her feelings. I actually think that um, he wasn't necessarily coming from a bad mind uh, place. So for her to say, yeah, I'm just he, she's trying to, he's trying to harm her emotionally, I thought was a bit too much. And I feel like she's got her own little healing to do. Definitely. I feel like more than likely she just knew that he was connecting with Sydney. We could see her face when, you know, Sydney was talking about, you know, she brought Phil home to meet the parents. You know, she had a good connection with Phil from the start. I quite like the connection initially, but I do feel like him having a connection with Sydney at the same time rocked her. Maybe she felt a bit insecure or uncomfortable. Obviously, she wanted him to just choose her, but this is part of the process. And that is, he will choose you 
but it's, he has to come to that conclusion. You can't really force that out of him. But the whole uh, emotional harm, no, I don't really feel like that was what it was about. Um, I don't think it was coming from that place. And because of that, you can see that they're not compatible and it ain't going to happen. And so I wasn't surprised when Shallow went to go meet up with Tom at the end to say that she was going to self-eliminate, basically. Um, I feel like she's got more healing to do. Like, I feel like she's a sweet character. Definitely got more healing to do there. And they just probably just weren't so suited. But I feel this take this on has a lesson, which is you can't just go around picking up women. You know, they were not dollies. You know, she's not a doll. And you don't know what people have been through. Like she said, you know, you don't know what experiences she's had. So you can't just do that. Whilst I feel like it was coming from a good place. You know, I don't know you personally, but I felt like that was coming from a good place in terms of he just wanted to probably make sure she was safe. Um, yeah, it didn't go down well because obviously she has triggers. And his trigger might have been, you know, I want to make sure this woman gets home safe. You don't know what kind of thing he's experienced where he feels like that or a woman that he might know who've gone missing or, you know, we don't know. But I feel like it was coming from a good place most at, at, at the core of it but obviously I feel like she's in her feelings because she wasn't chosen she didn't really she feels like he's probably just stringing her along and she didn't want to you know be second best especially when you put your heart out there ready to say yeah I've kind of chosen you so I feel like she kind of self-eliminated because of what happened but also because she wasn't necessarily feeling like she was going to get chosen that's just what I think on it anyway but what do you guys think you know did you tune in what do you think of this week's episode? I am looking forward to the reunion. I have seen some pictures circulating of Camille and Cornelius looking like they're still together. I was like, what in the world? I thought the mama's going to run for the hills. But it seems like no. So I'm definitely going to be watching. And I want to know who has connected or who has not and, you know, where they all end up. But we still got the final to go before the reunion anyway. So I'm there fast forwarding. I've still got another week or so to go. Oh, yes, and I had to add, at the ladies' lounge, Tommy did announce that there'd be no elimination this week. I think he knew that at that point um, it was quite likely that Shella was going to self-eliminate because even when he met with them to do the kind of intervention thing, I was thinking, Tommy's looking like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> and um, he asked them the question, like, you know, do you still like this woman or do you still like this man? And, you know, it was pretty peak, man. I was like, it's a bit silent around here. So, yeah, at that point, he's probably thinking, yeah, these guys ain't going to work it. So there's no point eliminating anybody else. Let's just, you know, see what happens. And, you know, we thought that was going to happen. But I do wish her well in her future endeavours in finding love. Shame it wasn't on the show, but that's just how it goes. But I must say, out of the all the seasons I've watched of Bridge Love, like, what the hell is going on with this season? Because why is everyone self-eliminating? This has been the highest I've seen ever of any self-eliminations. I don't think I've seen any other self-eliminations throughout the um, series is that um, throughout the um, seasons that have gone on so far this is the first one I'm like you got Cornelius got kicked because you know obviously it was his connection then Camille self eliminates then you've got you know Zaja gets booted then uh, Naeem self eliminates now you've got this one self eliminating um, Shiloh I'm like bloody hell mate what the hell's going on over there uh, for the next one guys can you look, try and get some people that are not going to self-eliminate when you see the series through and through. <laughs> Anywho, let me know your thoughts below. Yes, so thanks for watching that. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share and hit that notification bell so you know when I am uploading some more of people's business. So until then, my nosy people, stay blessed.